Welcome to the strict chin-up pullover class. I'm really excited about this one and wrote all this information for those more so beginner athletes who are just first being introduced to the pullover skill in gymnastics, or maybe you're a gymnast who have been doing recreational gymnastics for a few years, but this skill just seems to still elude you, okay? So we're gonna go over a lot of information about the pullover, and I'm gonna give you some progressions and drills that you can practice that are definitely going to help improve your performance. But before we get into all of that jazz, let me show you what a strict chin-up pullover looks like so you know what skill we're talking. All right, hardest part's gonna be climbing up. Okay, strict chin-up pullover. Easy as that. Woo, okay. So what we're doing is a strength movement. We're pulling our chin fully above the bar, keeping our chin above the bar ideally. We're lifting both of our legs super tight. They're kind of working as one cohesive unit as we rotate up, around, and even to the back side of the pull-up bar pushing up our chest at the end to finish in a really tall front support. So let's overview the topics that we're gonna talk about in class. We are gonna discuss the importance of why you definitely want to learn the strict chin up pullover in gymnastics. Then we're gonna go into the most common faults that I see with gymnasts, new or even if you're a veteran. Five drills that you can use in your practice to help improve your performance. And then last but not least, because strength is such a huge part of this movement, we've got to talk about some exercises to help you build strength in the lats, the biceps, your pulling muscles, your core, and your hip flexors specifically. So let's go ahead and get started. In part A of our pullover class, we're going to talk about the importance of why you want to learn, practice, and master this movement. Reason number one is the strict chin-up pullover is a great gauge of strength for gymnasts. Because obviously, if you've watched any of our other classes, you should hopefully know that gymnastics, gymnastics skills are very strength-based. Usually, 99% of the time, the stronger a gymnast is in her muscles, the easier her gymnastic skills are going to be because she's gonna have better and more control over her own body and how well she can control her limbs and her positions as she moves through gymnastic skills. So strength is a huge component of gymnastics movements and the chin-up pullover is a strength exercise. It challenges our pulling muscles, our biceps, our lats right here on the side of your body, okay? How well you can hold your chin above the bar. It challenges the hip flexors as we're lifting the legs up to horizontal. Then we also make sure we activate the core and the torso as you actually have to lift your body up and over to the back side of your bar. So really we are hitting like a total body strength exercise. And so if you struggle on any part of the pullover, because we're using such uh, specific muscle groups at specific times, you're usually able to pinpoint maybe a muscular weakness right off the bat. So if you're struggling to pull your chin above the bar, for example, on that initial pull, you just can't quite get it. You know that maybe there's a weakness in your biceps and your lats, and we need to do more pull-up progressions or maybe you can get your chin above the bar, you can hold it, but we're struggling to lift the legs, right? If we can't lift the legs very easily, maybe the hip flexors are a little bit weaker than you anticipated. So we gotta do more core exercises, leg lifts, stall bar leg lifts, uh, V-ups, tuck-ups, exercises to strengthen the hip flexors. But maybe you can do that part A, chin up. Part B, lifting the legs, but you struggle with that third component, which is actually rotating your body over the top of the bar, which is really core dominated. So if that's the part you struggle with and you keep falling back down, falling back down, we know that we can strengthen the core and then come back to the pullover and probably have a lot more success, okay? And so the strength gauge of this skill is just a really good 
test for gymnasts to use and kind of uh, see where they're at with their strength levels and knowing that that strength is going to transfer directly into their gymnastic skills. Huge, very important component. The second reason this uh, strict pullover is important is because it is actually a skill that's competed in beginner or those lower level gymnastics routines. So yes, it is a great strength gauge for those higher level gymnasts, but we actually see the chin up pullover in uh, recreational gymnastics routines. If your gym ever has like an in-house competition, we see it in like levels two, level three. Maybe if a gymnast misses her kip, her initial skill on her pull-up bar routine, she has to get on top of the bar somehow. And so she has to do that chin up pullover to be able to get into her front support and finish the routine. So we do actually need the chin up pullover for competitive gymnastics. So all around, it's a really important skill that all gymnasts should have for strength reasons, for competitive reasons, because it's one of those base foundational movements of this sport that's just gonna set you up for so much more success down, your, down the road with your journey in gymnastics. So you definitely wanna focus on it. And let's go ahead and move on to the next part. Part B of our strict chin up pullover class is all about common faults. And there are three main common faults that I see with new gymnasts or gymnasts who are just generally struggling with their pullovers. So once I overview all three of them, I'll tell you how to fix them. Number one is when a gymnast starts with their chin below the bar, which just means they have straight arms. So that looks like this. Okay, we're gonna pretend, woo, here. All right, I'm starting here. Maybe I even do a little bit of a pull up here, but as you can see, my chin is far below the bar. My arms are more straight than bent, and then I'm trying to get my legs to actually rotate around the bar to do the pullover, right? Okay, that is common fault number one. We can't do a pullover when our chin is so far beneath the bar and our arms are straight because the majority of our body mass, our body weight is so far below the bar that it takes an incredible amount of strength to be able to pull our body weight from totally far beneath the bar up and over and around the top of the bar, right? The general movement pattern for this pullover is a vertical pull and then a backward rotation, which means if we start with our whole body so far under the bar, our core, our hip flexors are gonna have to do so much work to pull our body around the top of the bar. And most new gymnasts especially just don't have that kind of core strength. And so the important part of the, the strict chin up pullover is actually the strict chin up. Because when we do our chin up, what we're doing is we are vertically pulling our body, getting ourselves closer to the bar, which means our body is closer to the bar, which means we have an easier time rotating up and around the bar, right? Versus when our body is so far away, we just have so much distance to cover to be able to pull over. It's just, way harder, way more challenging than it needs to be. So common fault number one I see is when gymnasts forget that chin up part and try to start their pullover from almost a full active hang. Don't do it. All right, common fault number two, when gymnasts, maybe you do do your strict chin up first, but as you're lifting your legs, your shoulders fall, okay? So this ties in really beautifully to common fault number one. It's the same general idea where a gymnast will do the strict pull up. Okay, the chin is above the bar, that's great. But as soon as they go to lift their legs and rotate around the bar, the shoulders fall. So we run into the same issue of, oh no, our body is traveling in the wrong direction that we want it to go it's going and falling down towards the floor when what we want to be doing is rotating up vertically towards the sky and around the backside of the bar. 
So common fault number two is actually doing the pull up, but lifting the legs and allowing the shoulders to fall asleep and fall towards the floor. Ugh. Just not gonna happen, okay? You gotta hold your chin up above the bar for the full rotation. Common fault number three is you get the, you get the chin apart. Your body's rotating over the top and towards the back of the bar. That is awesome. We're on the final step, but oh no, you cut that final rotation short. So you're landing more on top of the bar versus finishing your rotation, finishing your shift to the back of the bar, okay? So what I mean is you do the chin up. Pretend I just did a nice, beautiful, strict pull up, okay? Feet are rotating over the bar. Okay, we're on top of the bar and you're trying to lift. Ah, but you can't do it and you end up falling. You're like, oh my gosh, I did the hardest part of the pullover. Why can't I just finish it? Ah, it's because you just set your whole body weight on top of the bar here, your hips, your booty, the heaviest part of your body is on top of the bar. When in reality, we have to shift your hips and your booty to the back side of the bar here so that we can counterbalance the weight of your shoulders and your upper body as you lift into front support. Okay, so you have to bear with me. We're talking about trying to split our body in two. We've got to shift the lower half of our body to the back side of the bar so that we can lift the upper part of our body into that nice tall front support. If we stay directly on top of the bar, we don't finish out that shift backwards. Our lower half of the body is gonna be on top of the bar, which means we're not gonna be able to lift into that front support because gravity is gonna do what gravity does best and just kind of teeter totter you over and you're gonna end up falling. So instead of stopping directly on top of the bar, continue shifting all the way to the back like this. Top of the bar here. And now we continue to shift, 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 shift. See how my hips are on the back side of the bar now? That's where you want your hips to be. Not on top, because you'll fall forward, right? Ah! You want to shift all the way to the back of the bar, lift up into front support. So that brings us to the one kind of umbrella concept that you want to remember is always being aware of your center of gravity. So center of gravity on your body is the heaviest part of your body. Hips, booty, and usually like the quad area, okay? This is our center of gravity because it is the biggest mass area on our body. It weighs the most. And now according to physics, where the heaviest part of your body goes, the rest of your body is gonna follow, right? This is gonna determine the direction we move in. So that's why we want to always ask ourselves, how and where are you moving your hips? Now, can you see how this kind of really nicely folds into all three common faults? In this first common fault, when the athlete was starting with their chin far below the bar and straight arms, their hips, their center of gravity is far below our bar, right? Here. So the heaviest part of our body is so far below the bar which means you have to have like crazy superhero strength to be able to pull your hips, your booty, the heaviest part of your body up and over the top of the bar. It's just not gonna happen for most gymnasts, right? With common fault number two, as shoulders go down, as legs come around, right? As the shoulders drop, it causes the whole body to drop, right? Oh no, your shoulders are moving away from the bar instead of staying close to the bar and moving vertically up and around the bar. So again, we're allowing our center of gravity, the heaviest part of our body, to fall towards the floor instead of travel towards the sky, okay? Last but not least, cutting the final rotation short. So stopping on top of the bar. Again, if we have our center of gravity, our hips, our booty, directly on top of the bar, right, the heaviest part, and we add the weight of our upper body trying to lift up into front support, we've got a lot of weight on top of the bar, a lot of weight in front of the bar, which means we are going to whoo, tip over because gravity is gonna whoo, 
pull us down, which is why we need to shift our hips and our booty and our center of gravity to the back side of the bar so that there's a lot of weight on the back side of the bar, counterbalancing the weight of your upper body on the front side of the bar, and you can actually push up into a tall front support. See how my legs are straight down? And that allows my chest to just very nice and smoothly lift up into a front support. It's all about being aware of your center of gravity, where it is and how you're moving it at all times, especially in relation to your bar. So hips and booty, make sure you keep them in check, keep focusing on them because this makes all the difference in the world. The first strict pullover drill in our series is going to be a floor pullover with a band. So as far as level goes, this is more on the basic beginner side. It's a great starting point for gymnasts who are new to the sport, new to the movement, and just want to start by dipping their toe in to get a feeling for the general range of motion. Now, hopefully you can see that I have a little setup here, okay? I've got my PVC pipe and I've got two bands on either side just so I can have room for my face and it's secured to the post of my bar, okay? So let me show you what this drill looks like and then we'll go over a more step-by-step -step base. All right. All right, hopefully that movement pattern is starting to look familiar. So I've got my strength component of the pullover, which is so important, right? As I do almost like a horizontal banded modified strict pull up. So the resistance on the bands as I pull the bar under my chin helps me build strength in the biceps and the lats that will transfer into a stronger strict pull up when I'm hanging from the bar, okay? Now from there, I held the PVC pipe under my chin as I rolled back onto my shoulders, tapped my toes onto the ground in that rotation part of your pullover where we're actually moving up and on top and around the backside of the bar. So you wanna think of this as like a horizontal floor, very safe, first half of your strict pullover exercise that's going to help athletes build pulling strength, build core and hip flexor strength as they begin to move their body in that rotating range of motion so that they'll have a better idea and ability of actually practicing the full skill. So one more look at it. And obviously the farther you stretch your bands to begin, the harder it's gonna be because there's gonna be more resistance. So I'm gonna lift up into a hollow position, make sure everything's tight. Bar below my chin, lift and tap. Just like that. Drill number two in our strict pullover series is a box walking pullover. So now we're actually using our low bar. We've got a really high box here. And what I'm gonna do is actually walk my feet up my box, giving myself some assistance to then kick my body over the top of the bar and go through that full entire pullover range of motion. Let me show you what the drill looks like, then we'll go over the very important key points. Okay, so as you saw, I'm trying to use this drill to mimic the full strict pullover as much as possible, meaning don't skip or don't allow your athletes to skip 
the initial strict pull up. Even if they keep their feet and their toes on the floor for this, it's really important to start getting them comfortable with that range of motion, with this strength exercise, because it transfers into so many other gymnastics movements. And it's something that all gymnasts really need to be able to develop, the strength to be able to do strict pull-ups. Okay, so don't allow them to just start with their chin above the bar and then skip that step because it's just gonna harm them further down the road as they get farther into their gymnastics journey. Now from there, I strict pull up, try and use my arms as much as possible. As you saw, as I began to step my feet on my box, I kept my chin over the bar, right? This is important because if I let my chin fall as I'm stepping, look how far below the bar my center of gravity is. Too far, it's just not gonna happen, right? When the heaviest part of my body is so close to the ground, so far from the bar that I'm trying to rotate over, it's just not going to happen easily. You gotta keep your chin over the top of the bar, keeping your body close to the bar so that rotating is much, much easier, as easy as it should be, okay? Now, you saw me demonstrate as I kicked one leg over at a time. That's like step one. If you're able to do that single leg box walking pullover, you can walk your feet up to the top of your box and then you can at the same time bring both legs over rotating and doing the full pullover. Because you're keeping both legs together, it's just a little bit more of a challenge. So it's a great next step that you can try in this same uh, progression. So that's what that looks like with a single leg. Now it's a double leg. Okay, and it's gonna test and challenge the hip flexors and the core just a little bit more, helping athletes to continue to progress. So drill number two, the box walking pullover is gonna be a great next step to use. The third drill in our strict pullover series is a box pullover. And I'm gonna show you two different variations based on the height of a box that you can use. So if we take a look at my setup, I've got my bar and then I've got a taller box and I've got a shorter box, okay? We're gonna start on the taller box because the taller your box is, the easier this drill is going to be. Think about this as a continued, more challenging progression as compared to the drill that we just covered, which was our box walking pullover, right? And our box walking pullover, we had a box that was almost the completely as tall as our bar. So we were able to walk our feet all the way up towards the height of the bar, making our low bar pullover pretty simple. But now our box is getting shorter and the shorter it gets, the more challenging this becomes. So let's take a look at what the box pullover looks like and then we'll go over the step-by-step -step process and talk about the variations. All right, so there were two different pullovers using my tall box. On the first variation, you saw me start in a position with my toes on the box in a full hang. This is an important starting position because it allows me to, again, practice that strict pull-up that we need to do the full pullover. So I'm developing strength as I'm practicing the technique and the movement pattern of this skill. Super important key. Make sure you and your gymnasts always start and always practice that strict pull-up to build strength. Now in the first pullover I did, after I got my chin above the bar, kind of set my non-dominant foot forward and then kicked my dominant leg 
to initiate that pullover and that rotation up and around my bar, okay? Going one leg at a time, again, is a little bit easier because you get some power involved. You are pushing from the non-dominant leg, the bottom leg, so that you have a little jump that you can use to actually rotate yourself to do the skill. In the second variation I did with my tall box, I kept my feet together and actually lifted my legs both at the same time to practice my pullover. That one's more challenging because we are not getting that same jump off the block. We're not getting that kicking momentum from a single leg. So have athletes start by kicking and doing a single leg pullover from this tall box and only progressing to that double leg, both leg pullover as they have the strength and the confidence to do this drill. Now when the tall box is pretty easy, guess what? We can do those same two variations on a shorter block. And now as you can see, we've got a two footer here and a one footer here. You don't have to use the same size boxes as I do. This is what we have available. And this is for the sake of demonstrating different heights of blocks you can use. If you wanna go from a two foot block to maybe a foot and 10 inch block, you can. And then a block that's here, here, here. And take like 12 different steps down using 12 different heights. By all means, you can. You don't have to make a 12 inch, a humongous jump with your equipment. Okay, but the idea is to continue lowering the height of the block you use so that the drill becomes more challenging and you just continue to progress more and more towards being able to do the full pullover by yourself. The step-by-step -step mechanics are the same though. You wanna go through the same modified strict pull-up with your feet on your block. You wanna use your arms, your biceps, your lats to do the majority of the pull-up, building strength, and then you can go single leg or double leg, making sure you're lifting your center of gravity, your hips, your booty, your legs, all the way, rotating them towards the full backside of the bar so you're able to easily lift your shoulders into that tall front support. Now, when this one foot block is easy, again, continue getting lower and lower and shorter and shorter till you eventually make it all the way to the ground. That's the goal. Drill four in our strict pullover series is my favorite one, most definitely. We're gonna be talking about the noodle kick pullover, okay? So if you can see my setup, I've got two blocks supporting just a normal foam noodle, okay? If you don't have noodles at your gym or at home if you're practicing, you can use anything that's soft enough allowing you to kick it a little bit. Okay, so I just kind of hinted at what we're doing. So let me go ahead and show you what this noodle kick pullover looks like, then we'll talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the basis of this drill is to get yourself or your athletes doing this modified low bar pullover from the floor, right? We started with that high box, box walking pullover. Then our boxes got progressively shorter and shorter and shorter as we were able to do and successfully complete each progression. And so this one, we're actually doing this low bar pullover from the ground, no assistance with the goal of introducing athletes to the full movement pattern, moving through the full skill, using the kicking momentum of their dominant leg to help them through the movement as they're building strength and as they're just getting comfortable rotating around the bar, getting used to this skill, okay? So the idea behind the noodle is just to give gymnasts a target so that they know, okay, I've got to kick my dominant leg hard enough to send my noodle poof, flying back behind me, right? If a gymnast is doing this drill, but they're not lifting their legs very powerfully, not only are they not going to be able to kick their noodle back behind them, but they're not going to be able to do the pullover. So being able to 
kick the noodle so high that it gets some flight, it gets some air and soars back behind your bar and yourself just shows that you can produce enough momentum to actually get your body rotating around the bar for the full pullover. Okay, makes sense? Hopefully, let me show you what it looks like one more time. So like with our, all of our other progressions and drills, we're starting from a, a dead full hang beneath the bar to practice our strict pull up. Here, trying to use our feet, our legs as little as possible. Then I'm getting my non-dominant leg forward so that I can kick with my dominant leg, my good leg, and really send the noodle backwards and rotate my body for the full pullover. Shifting my hips, my booty, my legs fully behind the bar so that I can easily lift my shoulders up into that tall front support to finish. Now again, like with our other box drills, Okay, we always build off of these drills. We build off each progression. For our, our box walking pullover, for our tall box pullover, our short box pullover, we started by kicking one leg, and then when you or your athlete was able to do it, we kept the legs together like a full real pullover and rotated in that motion, that position. So after you or your athlete can kick the noodle back behind you with a single leg, you can try it with both legs. It's gonna be harder because you don't get that same kicking powerful motion that creates the momentum to help you do the skill. So this would be like the, the second variation of this single drill that's gonna be a little bit more challenging to help you continue to move towards that full uh, prescribed strict pullover. So here it is with both legs now, keeping them together as one solid unit. So you wanna lift fast, you wanna lift powerfully, you wanna keep your legs tight. And as always, remember, go through each of those important steps for your pullover. Shifting your center of gravity towards the back of the bar so that we have that weight distribution under the bar so you can lift up the top half of your body into that tall front support to finish. So there is your noodle kick pullover. And again, get creative with what you have. If you don't have a noodle, use some kind of stick, a broom, anything that you're gonna be able to keep yourself safe with. Our fifth and final drill in our strict pullover series is the full low bar pullover. So in our first four progressions, we've done more of a modification to our low bar pullover and now we're getting rid of all the boxes, all the noodles, all the extra equipment, and simply practicing the modified pullover without any equipment, just ourselves. So let me show you what that looks like. Variation number one, single leg. And variation number two, both legs as one solid unit. Okay, so like with all four of our other drills, I'm starting in that extended hang position. I'm practicing to build strength for my full strict chin up. And then I'm using the kicking momentum of my dominant leg to help me rotate up and around the back side of the bar to go through that pullover movement pattern. And then on the second variation, I make it more challenging on myself by keeping my legs together as one solid unit. I don't get that same kicking momentum and power that I do from my single leg low bar pullover, which again makes it harder. So I'm continuing to start at a more beginner drill and make my way towards the full strict chin up pullover a little bit at a time as I strengthen my body and improve my overall movement pattern. Now, because we are not using any boxes, we're starting from the floor, right? 
it's more challenging for you. It's more challenging for the gymnast versus using that high box that we use for our box walking pullover. Even the tall box or the short box we use in our box pullover variations. So you want to take some time. You want to allow your gymnast some learning, some growing time to get used to this next progression because it will be a little bit harder. Another great thing that you can practice with this drill is instead of starting in an extended hang with your legs bent, make that first strict chin up portion a little bit harder as well so that you continue to build the strength you need for the full skill. So we can strengthen or straighten our legs here so that we're using less of our legs to do our pull up. And then at the top of our pull, chins above the bar, the gymnast can then put the feet on the floor to rest before lifting the legs and actually doing the full low bar pull up. There, okay. So we're getting that necessary upper body strength. We're really challenging the hip flexors and the core by starting from a lower position and, and forcing ourselves to rotate our bodies around the back of the bar for the pull up. So I definitely recommend using this progression as your last one before moving on to the full skill or getting a spot from a coach on your full strict chin up pullover. Part D of our strict chin up pullover class is all about strength exercises. So we talked about how the strict chin up pullover is definitely strength dominated how strong you are in each of these individual movements like a pull up, like a sit up, lifting your legs is really gonna determine how easy or hard this movement is. And in the beginning, we discussed how it's important to train and master the pullover because it's a great strength gauge for higher level gymnasts. Plus those more beginner gymnasts are gonna be competing it in various levels of gymnastics. So we're gonna go over three different strength exercises you can use in addition to practicing your pullover to help you build the strength you need to do this movement and just to improve all of your gymnastic skills in general, right? Because all of these skills and exercises always come full circle and really influence everything, that, everything else that we do within the gym. So we're gonna be focusing on our pullers, our biceps, our lats, our upper body. We're gonna be focusing on our hip, flex, hip flexors, which are responsible for lifting our legs from fully extended down to the floor to that horizontal position in the pull-up. Then we're gonna focus on the core and our trunk and our midline, which is responsible for, after we lift our legs to horizontal, actually allowing ourselves to rotate up and over the top of the bar. So we've got our upper body, we've got our hip flexors, we've got our core, and we're gonna cover them with these three exercises. Movement number one is strict box pull-ups. So if you can't quite do the full strict pull-up by yourself, this is my favorite modification to use. So we're going to rest our legs, our heels on a box, okay? Which kind of takes some of our body weight out of the equation, making our pull-up easier because you're not having to lift and pull your whole body weight, right? Some of your body, your legs are supported by the box. So you can practice these full strict pull-ups, right? A little bit easier so that you can go through the full range of motion and really start to develop the lat, the bicep, the upper body strength needed to do the very first part of your strict pullover. So box pullovers. My rep count I recommend for these is to work towards being able to do a set of 10 strict, really great, perfect box strict pull-ups because that shows you've developed enough strength to be able to safely train the full strict chin-up pullover. And that's the whole goal here. I want you to be as safe as possible. So we've got to first develop this pulling strength 
because it's step one in the skill that we're trying to do. So work towards 10 strict box pull-ups. The second strength exercise we're gonna cover is box alternating leg lifts. So we're gonna keep the same box just right here in front of us. Get into that same starting position and bring our ankles to the bar to really target and light up our hip flexors. Okay, so every time we're lifting our leg to the bar, we're using this muscle right here. Okay, your hip flexors should feel it after a few reps. You're like, oh, this is a lot harder than I thought. I thought it was gonna be way easier. Well, that's good. That means we're using the right muscle and you wanna continue doing as many leg lifts as you can to really challenge that muscle and help it grow and help it get stronger. Plus, another little caveat of doing this drill is the longer and the more leg lifts that you can do from your box, the more your grip and your forearms are gonna light up and be on fire and really start to burn. So yeah, we're strengthening our hip flexors, but you're also getting some really great and necessary, necessary grip and forearm work in there as well. It's hidden, okay? It's not really hidden though, you'll feel it. All right, our third and final strength exercise is a candlestick lever. So this one is pretty challenging, but it is so good because it requires you to really engage and keep tight your entire body, all right? It takes some practice, some getting used to, and some time to work towards a really strong candlestick lever. So be patient with yourself. Give yourself some time to practice and build the strength you need to do it. So what we're gonna do is use a post, use some sort of uh, stability that you can grab onto. Our arms are gonna be bent. We're gonna lay down on our back. And then we're just going to lift up into a candlestick position and then as slowly as possible lower, keeping our body straight, okay? Here's what it looks like. So what you saw me doing was squeezing my booty so hard that my body stayed in this really rigid straight line as I lowered towards the ground. It is really gonna challenge how well and how strong your core is and how tight you can keep that hollowed position as you lower. When you get tired for sure, you're gonna wanna do this. and just drop your booty to the ground because it's hard, I'm not gonna lie to you, but don't allow yourself to do that. The goal here is to build strength. And if you wanna build the correct strength that we need in the right muscle groups, you've gotta do this exercise properly. So go slow, squeeze your booty, try to keep your core as tight as possible and your body position as straight as possible as you lower towards the ground. Now for our box alternating leg lifts, the goal to work towards is being able to do 20 reps in a row. One, two, three, four. While our candlestick levers, the goal is to be able to do five candlestick levers, that's it. But really going slow on that negative, holding five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and then coming gently down onto the floor. Being able to do 10 strict box pull-ups. 20 box alternating leg lifts and five reps of five second candlestick levers will definitely show you that you have the strength to do the full pullover. So continue to work these strength builders, continue to work all of the technique progressions that we talked about with our low bar pullover. And together, you're gonna be able to, after a few weeks, months, however, many, however much time of practice you need, be able to put together a full, really successful, strict chin-up pullover that you're gonna be so happy with because it's gonna make so many other gymnastic skills that much easier. And you're gonna have so much more confidence because you've put in the work to build strength and to build your awareness in this foundational skill 
that's just gonna make everything in here so much more fun as you're learning. So make sure you do not skip over the strength portion of this movement. It is so important, even though this isn't the most fun thing to do, not the most fun thing to practice. Not many people like to condition, it is important. So make yourself do it and you will thank yourself for it down the road, I promise. Yes, you did it. I'm so happy to see that you've made it through our full strict chin-up pullover class. Congratulations. Now a quick recap of what we went over so that you don't forget. Number one, why the pullover is important. Remember, it's a great strength gauge for those higher level gymnasts. Plus, it's a necessary skill those beginner gymnasts need when doing some kind of competitive routine. Gotta have it. Part B, common faults. Make sure your chin stays above the bar. As you begin to lift your legs and rotate around the bar, don't let the shoulders drop. Keep your shoulders close up towards the bar so that your body stays close to the bar and you can pull over easily. Last but not least, make sure to shift your center of gravity. Remember the heaviest part of your body, hips and booty, towards the back side of your bar. Not the top of the bar, you'll get stuck, but the back side of the bar so that you can pull your shoulders up into that finishing front support position. And our five drills that you can use. Start on the floor with a band, our floor pullovers. Walk up a high box, really use that, that block to your advantage. Walk up it like a ninja on a wall. Number three, our box pullover. So continue to uh, shorten the height of the box that you use with every single progression and step that you use, making it more and more challenging until you make your way to the floor. We get the noodle back out. This is my favorite one. And you get to challenge yourself by kicking that dominant leg, getting some momentum, using it to your advantage and making that noodle fly across the gym. And then last but not least, our low bar pullover where we're starting with our legs straight out in front of us, practicing that modified strict pull up and then lifting our legs, rotating and actually doing the full second half of this skill, okay? Drills if you need to build strength, which everyone does, okay? Everybody's in the same boat. We all have to get strong for this. Three of them focusing on the biceps, the lats, the hip flexors and the core, all the really important muscular groups used in this skill. Box strict pull-ups work towards a set of 10. Box alternating leg lifts work towards a set of 20. Last but not least, candlestick levers, those really challenging ones on the floor. Go slow, make yourself be tight, put in the work to build strength because you're gonna feel the benefits and you're gonna feel it pay off when you do the full strict pullover plus all of your other gymnastic skills, literally all of them, because they're all strength based, right? So good luck practicing and training. If you use any of this information or these drills in your practice, I definitely want to hear how they go. So reach out, shoot me a little message so that I know what worked for you, or maybe give me some ideas or suggestions of what you would like to see next. And I cannot wait to hear how it goes. Good luck and have fun.